my oldest son was, was a pretty darn good basketball player. We have some memories from the hardwood. Then our middle son was a, was a killer defensive end. Uh, we have at least one state championship under his belt. Uh, it's hard to believe he's mine. He's kind of a big guy. Uh, our youngest son's not an athlete. As a matter of fact, he retired from organized sports after two years of t-ball. <laughs> Just gave it up. Only reason he played was to be with his friends. When he was six years old, he was on a great t-ball team. I'll tell you how great they were. At the end of the season, their record was 13 and 1. But there was a problem. There was another team in the league that had an identical record of 13 and 1. And so on a Saturday afternoon, in, in Trousdale County, ball is everything, man. I mean, people heard about these two great t-ball teams. Everyone showed up on Saturday afternoon to see the World Series of t-ball. We were not prepared for the game we saw. At the end of the first inning, it was tied 5-5. Five to five. At the end of the second inning, it was deadlocked. I'm not making this up. 11-11. 11 to 11. We finished the third inning. It's still tied 15-15. to 15. Then the other team came to bat and scored six runs. Now in T-ball, that's a big lead. We were going to have to bat just about everybody. 21 to 15, we, we got some runners on base and scored a run and made an out and scored a run and made an out and runners on base. And, and suddenly I look at the scoreboard, it is 21 to 20. Runners on first and second, two outs. The, the next batter is a little girl. I'd watched her all year. She's number 16 batter in the lineup. She was about this tall, weighed 32 and a half pounds, soaking wet. Looked like a little pipe cleaner standing up there beside the tee. And the name of her game was, pick up the bat as if it were a heavy stick of stove wood and carry it up to the tee. Then when she got it up there, she'd grab the handle of the bat, drop the barrel, and she'd look around like she was in pain. And then she would grimace, and just as it was time to hit the, she would act like she was in pain, and she'd lift that bat up there, and you hoped. It hit the ball. Well, that day she went through every gyration, made the face, grimaced, brought the bat up, and instead of hitting the ball, she dusted the ball, which dropped off the tee, rolled lazily out toward the little pitcher. He was off that mound like a bird on a June bug. I mean, he pounced on the ball, turned to first the thrower out, and then the most amazing thing happened. As he brought back his hand, the ball rolled off the tips of his fingers, and he turned around and stared at that ball. And then he heard someone say, pick it up. Well, he picked it up and he turned around. He did it again. <laughs> well, she's little and she's skinny, but she's quick and she's on first. Now, here's the situation. 21 to 20, bases loaded, two outs. The situation has become so tense. Grown men have climbed up on that chain link fence. <laughs> They're swinging back and forth like caged orangutans. There are women up in the audience who have clawed their fingernails in the arms of their husband. All the colors drained out of their husband's face. It is a tense situation, and it's become so tense that I've lost our son in the batting lineup. And suddenly I look around hoping not to see what I'm about to see. <laughs> Forever emblazoned in my mind is a big red number 10 on the back of a mustard yellow t-shirt between two little narrow shoulder blades our baby is dragging his bat up to the battery box. I don't see what's so funny about this. I'm experiencing the first signs of a heart attack. My chest is getting tight. I've got cotton mouth. I can hear my heart beating up under my ears because with the next swing of the bat, our son is going to be great or he's going to be a goat. He's going to win the game. He's going to lose the game. I, I'm thinking... What's he thinking? He walks up to the tee that day, looked around, as if he didn't have a care in the world. He usually took two practice swings that day, he took four. He would bring the bat back, move it up, almost touch the ball, then he'd look around. Then he'd go back with the bat. He did this four times. On the fourth try, like a steel trap snapping shut, he raised his foot. He did not hit the ball, he killed the ball. Low line drive like a missile that left the tee, three foot high. Third baseman never had a chance. The ball hit the ground three inches from the le third baseman's left heel. He looks down, gets a puff, face full of dust. You know now the ball is careening off the outfield fence. Eight or nine little boys and girls chasing in like a bunch of puppies. The runner from third has already scored. The runner from second is rounding third. The coach is doing this. Half the people in this little stadium went hog wild. 
there were people hugging and kissing one another. Some people taking advantage of the situation. <laughs> I look out in the infield, our coach is lying on his back. Little boys and girls are crawling all over him. He's trying to push them back to get air. Then I see Joseph wandering around the infield like he's lost. He's just wandering around. He's walking up to adults and asking this question. And he's not getting the answer he's looking for. He runs up and asks somebody else. Finally, third person said something he wanted to hear. His face brightens. He runs and jumps in the heap. We all get in the back of the pickup truck and ride to Sonic singing, We're Number One. <laughs> that night when I get him home, I have a burning question for him. I called him back to the bedroom. I'm sitting on the bed. I say, Joseph, yes, sir. Tonight, this afternoon after the big game, everyone's going crazy. Out in the infield, you're wandering around asking people this question. What was going on? He said, I was trying to find out who won the game. <laughs> the second thing that happened in this T-ball story is uh, about two weeks later, uh, I, asked, I was talking about the game with Joseph. and See, I knew what I was thinking when the bases were loaded 21 to 20 and my son was at bat. I knew what I was thinking. I knew the pressure I was feeling. So I wondered what he was feeling. And so I said, Joseph, the 21 to 20 Saturday, game on the line, bases loaded. You were the batter. What were you thinking? He said, keep your head down and your eye on the ball. <laughs> I thought, what a great coach. What a great coach to teach my son that in the heat of the battle, when all this other stuff is going on and people are screaming and yelling, and the most important thing is not how far you hit the ball, not how hard you hit the ball. First objective, hit the ball. And in order to do that, you've got to keep your head down and your eye on the ball. I will challenge you, ladies and gentlemen, in these uh, interesting times. The Chinese said, may you live in interesting times. Aren't these interesting times? Here's a question for you. What are the two or three most important things in your life? And are they getting most of your time and attention and energy? Because there's, so there's so much good to do. But sometimes good is the enemy of better, and better is the enemy of best. One thing you don't want to do with your life 10 years down the road is to look back with regret and say, Oh no, I majored on minor things. You want to make sure you major on the majors. You can do things for your grandchildren that your children don't have time to do. You can be a source of encouragement and take the time. Uh, my brother Tom kind of led the way for me. He, he has a granddaughter and a grandson. And when she was, when her name is Josie, when she was about uh, 18 months old, uh, they were attending a, a baseball tournament in Portland, Tennessee, and I knew Tom was going to be there with Josie. And, and so I get out of the car, and I walk over to the ball field, and I see my brother Tom standing with his granddaughter. She's holding his finger. They are dressed alike. <laughs> I don't mean kind of alike. I mean exactly alike. They've got on stonewashed short, cut-off shorts. They've got matching tennis shoes. They have matching polo shirts, yellow. Not just any yellow, melon yellow. I walked up to him and I said, you've lost your mind. He said, I didn't know what she's going to be wearing. <laughs> I said, sure, sure. I have a friend who's a, who's a humorist over in North Carolina. His name is Dr. Charles Petty. And, and it seems like yesterday I was with him and we were talking about his granddaughter. And he said, uh, you know what I did Saturday? I said, I have no idea. He said, I rode the escalator up and down at the mall 37 times. <laughs> He said, do you want to know why? I said, I'd love to know. He said, uh, because Mary Catherine is two years old, and she won't always want to ride the escalator with me. And he said, we'd ride up, and we'd, we'd ride down, and she'd look at me and say, do it again, Papa. He said, 37 round trips I took. I talked to him this week, and I said, well, tell me about the granddaughter that you rode the escalator with 37 times. How old is she now? He said, 13. It's been 11 years. And he said, and, and my son and his family go to our church, and he said, we were at church the other day, and, 
And uh, she came in with three of her little girlfriends and two of her boyfriends, and I didn't even try to get her, her attention. He said, because now she's got other things to do. But when she was two, he said, it was front and center. <laughs>